I, I think that's the problem. No, hey, I just think, man, we as a people, man, we got a lot of growing up to do, man. We got to, like, it's like we take 20 steps forward, man, and then take 40 steps backwards, kind of. Yeah. Feel what I'm saying? So what ain't these kids' fault, man? It's what they've been kind of conditioned, man, because as a man, I think as a black man, with the way stuff feels now, you kind of, kids are brought up and conditioned to hate somebody's older than them because first of all they usually don't have a father in their life I didn't have no dad and my still mom told me I had to respect older motherfuckers yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's the here. that's the attitude I, yeah, I yeah. kept you get me so I, I get what you're saying but who who is is leading the generation to go nigga fuck your elders yeah, like yeah. that's your attitude fuck them niggas like or is that just because of the respect level. We don't respect no older niggas because the generation right now looks at old as a disease or some shit. Some of these motherfuckers don't warrant no respect. If you look at the bullshit that's going on out here, man, like just today, like even with the internet, the most active niggas on the internet is niggas over 40. Talk about niggas with the bullshit. Some niggas need to take that, get that mic tuck, you feel me? Man, a super duper messy man. Them motherfuckers are somebody's grandfathers, dog. Yeah, yeah. Older, man, you, dog, I'm old now. Look at these motherfuckers. Like, man, it be the it be the older niggas that be crashing out on the internet, though. It's just they get that phone and they just don't stop. Like, come that, on, bro. That's because, man. To me, I just feel like the they they found a new way to try to hustle a game. Yeah, with yeah. With the bread, and so now it's like I don't even give a. About the respect level of being an OG, I guess, nigga. I need some money, so you need some money. It's it's at the level now. Like I tell you, everybody wants to be in a position of I gotta be famous or some. Shit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be normal. I don't even think yeah. it's about the money because some of these motherfuckers don't know how to monetize. They nah, nah. Some of these dudes just out here because. But they think they do. Yeah. That's the problem. And niggas don't know Instagram don't even make you no money. But like they, that's they a, don't give a fuck about they this don't give shit. A fuck. They just think because of certain motherfuckers who get on, put their face on screen and do yeah. shit that nigga niggas is pulling up in Ferraris and all kind of yeah. shit. They see the fascination with that shit. Niggas go, just like everybody can't be a motherfucking rapper, but every nigga will try. Every nigga you know, wanna be a rapper. Told me the other day. He said, steal all this bullshit is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Them old ass niggas and they all fucked around and got a deal and there we go. Fuck that thinking they can go do this shit. I said, no, it ain't my fault because it was bound to happen anyway. Yeah, yeah. Of, of course. Niggas was going to bound to find the motherfucking access to the game that they feel that's making everybody bread. I'm going to get in that shit too. What I got to do, just sit up and talk some shit? Yeah, yeah. And, and talk about, oh, this nigga ain't, this nigga ain't authentic. This nigga ain't authentic. This nigga ain't authentic. And niggas gonna be curious to go, well, why ain't he authentic? Yeah. And, and everything is your opinion and shit. Now think about this 211, right? Yeah. You an old ass man. You got a penitentiary record. You ain't got no job experience. Yeah. And you come home out of prison, you see it's these young kids. <laughs> yeah. Dudes that you see ain't even popping. Yeah. That dude was a buster in the hood. Who, who was this? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And they figure, but man, you know, I heard he getting the bag. They figure they gonna move in. They gonna start doing yeah. it. Next thing you know, they got their grandkids or their kids hooking them up some cameras and they on there wolfing them old yeah, ass yeah. stories. Me personally, I wouldn't do no shit. Like that, I'll go for what I know. Cause even being that that old, if I'm 50 and 60, just getting out of prison, and man, I'm finna go give me a job and, and and live my life. I'm not even trying to be seen on no camera. Like I'm trying to go what I know. I mean, from my from my experiences, every time I see another nigga doing something, and I tell myself, oh, I I think I could jump in that lane. Now nah, stay in your lane, do what you know. I mean, unless you got the time and the money to invest and take a loss, because mm -hmm. it, everything is. Uh, Highly, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't informed, you could take a loss. So you just jumping in and you crashing out, you spending money, you investing money in equipment and all that. And 90% of the time, niggas' whole problem that they can't succeed is because they ain't consistent. Yeah, for real. So a nigga will buy all this do five episodes and be like, I ain't made no money yet, nigga. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you just wasted yeah. your motherfucking time. Yeah, like, definitely. you know what I'm saying? That's what be happening. You know what this internet stuff is funny because you was indirectly a part of one of the biggest 
videos that went viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? nah, for sure. You know, not not, not being because eight, eight, I know you detest all messy stuff. I'm talking about when Rose Mo was out there, you know, dancing with the homie Bosco. Yeah, you know you like some shit. So yeah, I had yeah. to watch your ass sometimes. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna say nothing. Bosco is the homie. Bosco cool. Y'all cool now, right? Yeah, it's whatever. It was whatever, okay. So I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna I'm I'm sidestep that one. I'm gonna sidestep that one. But that was a big moment on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, it was a big moment on the internet. So you running with these dudes, man. Because a lot transpired from that little bitty time when you first started, man. It may seem like a long time. Mm -hmm. Kind of like you start elevating. I had fast. different little levels, levels and sh And your first, yeah. you get linked up with Jeezy for a minute, right? Yeah, yeah. That was in the beginning, beginning. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't, I was just around and then end up meeting them and um, <clears throat> end up meeting them. And I was barely a rapper. I was learning. I was around Suge first, you know what I'm saying? And it was kind of like artist development. That was like around the time Petey Pablo was over there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and Squeak brought me around. Squeak okay. was like the first. Shout out to homie yeah, Squeak. Yeah, shout out to homie yeah. Squeak group. We got to get Squeak up here. Oh, Squeak, definitely. Squeak was the first one to be like, I made a little tape for the homies in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Burn some CDs for, you know what I'm saying? Niggas at the park and shit. And, um, and Squeak and the homie Pee Wee, rest in peace, was like, nigga, you got, we, we were finna take you artist development. They took me to studios, got me learn how to write 16 bars and do a hook and, you know what I'm saying, all this shit. Then they introduced me to uh, Suge and Neckbone. Shout out to them niggas. And um, immediately, them niggas like it, come to the studio. Nigga, I was making songs and songs just learning, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then, um, something happened with him and then I don't see him for a minute. Then I start running into Jeezy a lot. You know what I'm saying? And when Jeezy told me like, you know what I'm saying? If that don't pan out, you know, we got a place for you over here. You got home over here. So when it didn't pan out, I'm calling down there like, you know what I'm saying? What's up? And they used coming back and forth from LA. And then I just started being over there learning how to, and it took me like two, three years to even figure out how to make, you know, like, semi-quality music, I had to get in the flow because I wasn't no rapper. Mm -hmm. I was, but I wasn't. Yeah. I had a deal and everything, mm -hmm. and I had no project out, you know what I'm saying? So it took me like two, three years, but being around that nigga and the people he had and watching like, going to sessions, watching Lil Wayne and how Khaled and all these motherfuckers move in the studio and mm -hmm. T.I., different motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, okay, I'm sitting there watching their work ethic and how they record and Pro Tools come back to LA, buy my own studio, record myself and, you know what I'm saying, and just being around that got me, you know what I'm saying, learning how to rap. Now, was you around ZZ during the BMF period? Um, uh, Was that already over? Was they had already, that already? Um, I kind of came in like when everybody, the time period, it was like everybody was going to jail. Okay, so, so I uh, came in, yeah. I started hanging out in Atlanta like 05, and then 06, I got into the rap. Like in the 06, 07, he signed me. And then I probably didn't even put a project out until the end of 07 and 08. You know what I'm saying? Um, I knew like both sides. Y'all know a lot of niggas, you know what I'm saying, from here and there and, and all, you know what I'm saying, all in Atlanta. Atlanta was booming. Well, Atlanta oh, definitely booming. That shit was like. Um, so you was never approached by who banging? Uh, I was though, okay. Okay. <laughs> but now nah, me and Mac. So I, I met, I seen Mac at the park a whole bunch of times. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I guess what him and Squeak was going through, what they was going through, it was like I never had nothing to do with whatever they was going on. But it was like this is my close big homie right here. Right. So you know what I'm saying? I really, I was with him coming around. You know what I'm saying? So when they had their separation, I really didn't see Mac like that. So um, I remember we was on a show. It was like. I think it was Mac 10, Jeezy, and what's that nigga name? Mr. Cheeks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we was on like a baby tour, like down the, tw down the 10 freeway all the way to 20, all the way back to Atlanta. <laughs> you gotta be real courageous huh? to call yourself Mr. Mr. Cheeks. Mr. Cheeks. That's hella pause right there. Yeah, I, I had to. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's, the worst That's hella pause, huh? <laughs> Mr. Cheeks. <laughs> You ass. Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, you know, all good, big, but hey, yeah. uh, the, the, the Beamers, Jeeps, and the sh that used to bang. Yeah, now nah, he had some bangers of Lost Boys and sh Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. met all them. And then I remember this, maybe the second night, I'm like, damn, Mac 10 on the sh I walked through they, through they little green room and introduced myself. He like, nah, I heard of you, whoop, whoop. So we got exchanged numbers. And this is how I had to learn the rap game too. I'm like, yeah, man, can I get a song? I'm gonna get on a song. Niggas like, you know what I'm saying? I got this from a lot of people too. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was first beginning, they like, man, no, nah, he like, get popping, bro. I'm for sure gonna reach out. And I'm just a young nigga, man, that nigga Hollywood, nigga. Woo, I ain't tripping off of that nigga. But it was just, it was me. So by the time that I started making some noise, he was one of the first niggas like, yeah, yeah, young nigga, you, what's happening? You know right. what I'm saying? You, you, you making some noise, let's get it. And what the, f boom, sending them songs. So I got a few songs with him and he been, um, when we run into each other, he give me a lot of game and he embraced me a lot. You know what I'm saying? He's, and he's- Shout out to one -oh. Yeah, shout out to Mac. Definitely. We was sliding over here to uh, all old school Mac. Uh, all your shit, mm -hmm. even when you was on Who Banging. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I used to buy all them albums. Yeah, I with all the homies over yeah. here from Inglewood. It was a good time. Yeah, but we talk about how niggas was putting niggas together. I forgot who we was talking about, but nigga, we go back to Who Banging. It was from West Side Connection to Who Banging, it was Bloods and Crips together. Definitely. Mm -hmm. you That's feel why me? I say it's, it's, in no disrespect, you know, Kendrick, my nigga, like, but we've been linking up for a while, man. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, we've been knowing how to collaborate and come together to try to chase this motherfucking dream of, of yeah. being out of bullshit. And making money on that, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. So it's been going on for a long time. Yeah, that's just like an outsider's perspective, though, because they don't really know what's going on out in the West Coast, right? You know, like, it, it always, yeah, it's always, it's always somebody in the, yeah. it's always the media motherfuckers who you know who fail to do research on the real uh, activity of niggas in the neighborhoods and shit. they just go off of what they see, and then you know Kendrick is so mother large and popular or oh, he united the gangs and and he brought them together it was a good scenery but at a time at in the in the in the city right now i mean it's not like it's done every year i mean certain niggas hang with certain niggas i hang with crips every day like mm -hmm. you know, my right hand niggas be tf and g perico you feel me i'm with mm -hmm. these niggas every day you know what i'm saying these are my guys but like i think is you know every time you put it on a big scale and it'll turn into that. But like, you know what I'm saying? Outside of what the industry talking about and what the phone talking about, we do this every day. Definitely. But at the same time where it's at in LA, it's like the city on fire. And oh, it's definitely. been on fire since since after pandemic. Niggas mm -hmm. is running wild, like wild, wild west out here. Niggas is doing anything, taking anything, tripping on anything. So I think that was like a perfect time to even, even if it wasn't that or it was that, like to put that on a big scale, sell a lot for the city. Cause behind the scenes, niggas is like everybody clicking up. Like nigga, yeah. hey, nigga, you we need to drop music. You think that's uh you think that's the youngsters or that's just everybody trying to get I mean, it's whoever wanna fall in. Cause mm -hmm. some niggas is like that shit. You know exactly. Wooty whoop and wooty whoop. Nigga, we still, you know what I'm saying? So you can't really. Be some mad motherfuckers that ain't with no type of peace. Yeah. Well, some, you know, sometimes scars run deep, man. You get me? Sometimes mm -hmm. personal and scars run deep. And, and sometimes niggas ain't got shit else to do and that's all they got. You feel me? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And at the end I, of the day, you got to respect that. Of, I know a couple of them. You yeah, me? I talking to the homie in jail yesterday. I'm like, nigga, you've been coming out and out of jail 20 years, bro. And I get this call every time you finna come home. Man, I'm finna woo. I'm like, come on, bro. What you really gonna do is you finna get on your business or you just finna be big pyro. Man, I'm always gonna be pyro. I cut him off right there. Hey, yeah. yeah, there you go then. I don't even, ain't no buts about it. So I can know where we, I can expect. You feel me? If I'm expecting better and what you telling me and you coming home at 40, talk about nigga, it's pyro, nigga. Like, yeah. I got, you got to respect with it. Nothing yet. Especially if you're in a different place in your life, you get me? Yeah. Like, it's always going to be love the hood and love the set and respect, but I'm on some shit different yeah. right now. Like, I'm really in a different lane and, and my money is right and, you know, uh, uh, people and, and I ain't having no issues and everything and I can't, I can't, I, I just can't be around some shit that might, uh, jeopardize my situation, sure. man. That's how I'm thinking. You me? Like you, you do what you want to do, but I know how I move. Exactly. I know how I talk, and I know what type of business I'm conducting. And it's like I didn't made it this far, nigga. The conversations is even different from certain right. niggas. It's like you know I'm gonna be, you know, um, 
you know, I know how to talk, but then it's like I can only be around certain for so long. It's like a nigga be like, I got money on the line. Exactly. Like I'm trying to bust a move. 